Hello everybody, long time no see. Uh, we built a tiny house, lots of life stuff, but uh, my old diesel heater died last year. I haven't needed it because it's been summer. It's starting to get really cold uh, in Ontario where I am right now, so we've installed it. And I'll show you an issue that you might come across if you're either new to diesel heaters or buying one that is just kinda, they're all cheap Chinese Amazon shit, um, and very, very few come with instructions. And if you read the reviews, most of them don't come with instructions in English, or if it is, it's horrible English. So there's lots of YouTube videos. If you get a uh, diesel heater, I highly recommend scouring YouTube for how to install it because the instructions are useless. But this is troubleshooting. If you're unable to get it running, if you're a new user and you've done everything correctly and it turns on, I'll show you. And there's my buddy Winston, just chilling. So this is our brand spanking new diesel heater. Um, this is the cover. So, if you ever see the small versions versus the big versions, the small versions, it's literally just this. It'll have an external fuel tank. This one has a five liter fuel tank, which isn't a ton. So as I've said, there's very few instructions. All of them are slightly different, but we're gonna turn it on. We'll get it running. That's at least the start. So you at least know you're on the right track. Um, if your voltage is wrong or something else is wrong, it'll throw up an error code immediately. I've had that happen, it's a pain. Like I said, documentation on these is horrible. It doesn't tell you what to do. But a problem you may come across is, so this is the fuel tank, um, the actual, actual heater down there, and this is the fuel pump. And depending on the size of the fuel pump and how big your tank is, so if you see, I'm trying to point back there, that thing back there, it's low in the tank. It's not at the bottom where it should be. It's about here. So it needs to prime first. And as I said, all of them are different. This is clearly on, it's running. We're gonna set it to max temperature just to get it ready and going. It's doing all its stuff. It's also heating up the heating element which is inside, which all diesel engines have. This is just basically a little baby diesel engine that throws out heat. Um, but what's gonna happen, it's gonna, it's gonna start to prime the fuel pump. So there's a little bit of fuel in there that it's pulled through and it ran out because it didn't put a ton in. But basically this guy, once we see it start to fill up, then it can go. And you hear that? That's the fuel pump going. And you can see the little bubble. So it's trying to prime and it's pushing, it's filling it up. There's a bit of air because it was empty, but we're gonna let this run. It'll keep trying until it gets enough to start. And when these things start, you'll know because they blow a ton of hot air. So we're going to let this go for a little, little bit and see, and hopefully it starts working. And do you hear that little rumbling like a little monster? That's a good sign. The, whoa, 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 whoa. That's a good sign. It's about to ignite. And even when this is working properly, you'll still hear that. It takes 30 seconds to a minute. It just needs to get, it's like a choo-choo train. And there will be a bit of an off-gassing smell the first time. Um, this thing has never really run before. It's been assembled in China, shipped over here, and hopefully it doesn't explode. I've had good, but we're going. All right, so it's up to speed. We're getting, that's the heat we should be getting. It's rarely hot enough that it'll burn you. I don't recommend, you know, putting your hand up directly against this when it's really, really going. Uh, I'm gonna build an enclosure for this eventually because it's kind of awkward. You wanna be able to keep it free and I'm just gonna put this back. So you're gonna want this letter this run about 10 minutes the first time, full blast, just to get rid of any nonsense. Um, and just diesel heaters in general, you can run them on low for a long, long time. I run these overnight regularly in my box truck. I've got other videos if you wanna check those out. But they can get some really bad carbon buildup if you let them run too long at low. So every once in a while, if you've been running it low for a while, crank it up as high as it'll go, run it for about 10 minutes, and that'll clear out a lot of the gunk and the crap and just make things better. And this isn't my final solution, final enclosure, but this is just so it's not venting in. You do not want to mess with carbon monoxide. It will kill you, especially in a place this small. So be very, very careful to make sure it's venting properly out the door, make sure it's connected, because the hardware they supply is absolute garbage. This is one I have that I'm gonna install that is better than the one I have. But they just install these really, really cheap, um, I don't know what they're called, these rings, and they suck. So you absolutely wanna make sure that this is connected and doesn't fall off and comes out. 
I hope this wasn't too much of me talking. This tiny home I live in, I just insulated it. It has a lot of work to go, but Chinese diesel heaters will make you pull your hair out, even if you've done this before. Stick with it. They're fantastic. I've used, um, I've got my Mr. Buddy, which I've also used in other videos. Fantastic, but I, again, very serious carbon monoxide um, issue overnight. People have died using these, especially in a van, so be very, very careful. During the day, fine, and also condensation. I have also an electric space heater underneath, but this guy, bang for the buck, and, serve, and just heating a place like this, cannot beat it.